Beauty and health are multi-million dollar industries drawing resources from unlikely sectors. Forests and marine reserves are often sources tapped into for medicinal and cosmetic products. Plants and animals endemic to the Caribbean, for example, are often explored as raw material for major international cosmetics and pharmaceutical companies. So we recognize the Nagoya Access and Benefits Sharing Protocol as an opportunity to promote the conservation of our biological resources. Some of them we already know the, their potential and some of them we are just starting to discover and research them. There have been confirmed cases in the islands of the Bahamas, St. Lucia and elsewhere with an increasingly visible trend of bioprospecting being observed. We have had for the last several years um, a project or an activity has been operating in the Bahamas that has implications for the Nagoya Protocol where um, a particular species of soft coral had been harvested in the Bahamas and was you being used or being uh, investigated for its uh, cosmetic purposes. The field of medicine is also making discoveries. Currently, human trials are underway to test the effectiveness of cancer-treating drugs developed from a microfungi called Salinospora tropica. It is found exclusively in the marine sediments of the Bahamian coast. The Feu de Lance, St. Lucia's endemic viper, is also currently being researched for its benefits to the medical field. There is an antivenom which comes out of Costa Rica, actually which originated with a, from a St. Lucian snake in the Kentucky Zoo in the, in the, in the US. Here in St. Lucia, that snake is not protected and they're really there's no laws that protect the intellectual property rights for this particular snake. In, for example, um, Brazil, where they have a similar snake, they have researched the, the venom and they've developed a, a blood pressure drug, which is used blood pressure and heart disease drug. In our particular case, we believe that the, the venom that we have here is actually has something in it that can cause the blood to clot. And for people who are bleeding and so on, there may be potential um, things there, chemicals which may actually, if researched properly, could be used to good advantage. The recent cases highlighted in St. Lucia and the Bahamas are not standalone or a new phenomenon. Recently in St. Kitts, the government was approached for information on removing microorganisms for cataloging as a new species in Germany. In St. Lucia, the Farmers with Disabilities Beekeeping Association has also been approached to collaborate with international researchers to assess the properties of the honey they produce. We have an idea that the campus has some beneficial properties as far as uh, the honey produced out of it is concerned. The phenomenon of scientists and researchers exploring indigenous genetic resources is not limited to the material, but extends to the local knowledge associated with the use of these materials. Over the years, traditional knowledge has become vulnerable to exploitation by international bodies for use in both the cosmetic and medicinal industries. Since they made us feel our traditional knowledge was invaluable, it had no, no price tag on it, but we have come of age and we realize that our body of knowledge, which is our traditional knowledge, is as important as conventional knowledge and even more important because it is ours. People go to local bush doctors, local people, they learn how to use it. At first they need it, so they gather it. Even in the developed world, like the yew tree up in the northwest, um, but sooner or later, Although people were making money gathering it and producing it, they synthesize it and it's lost. Similar precedents were set in the Bahamas when sharks were once harvested for their livers, which provided a potent source of vitamin K. An industry which, when discontinued due to synthesization of the vitamin, caused a number of fishermen to lose their livelihoods. The documented cases in the islands raise alarming indications to the vulnerability to exploitation of indigenous flora and fauna. Though some measure of permitting systems are currently in place in various countries within the region, 
most countries are yet to implement effective permitting systems to fill the gaps that exist. Scientists apply for permits and the convention obligates us faithful little countries to allow it. What is needed really is more formalisation of research permits so that they make it clear what can be done and what can't be done. One of the things we really need to do is look at incorporating it into our regulations and a part of the protocol of um, permitting in order to do research regardless of whether it is expo for export or, interna or internal research. Through enacting proper legislation, governments will ensure effective management, protection and ownership of their genetic resources. Proper research permits, for example, prevents third-party transfers of information, rights of materials or patents should commercialization be envisioned. If the resource coming out of St. Lucia is being used overseas, we would like the country, the people of St. Lucia to benefit. Whether it's medicinal, whether it's arts and craft, whether it's shampoos, whether it's health, or whatever areas we use it in, we have accumulated that knowledge. It's something that belongs to us and we need to guard it with our life and if there's money to be made from it, we need to be the first recipients of that, the wealth that comes out of that resource. Part of the dream of the Earth Summit and the, Conven the Biodiversity Convention was that local people were to get benefits. And benefit doesn't always mean in terms of cash dollars. It could mean in terms of sharing the research, training persons and building capacity in doing similar research, uh, building institutions for research and so on. Such mutual access and benefit sharing is the aim of international agreements like the Nagoya Protocol, which focuses on the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits from the sustainable use of genetic resources. The Bahamas has already undertaken some of the preparatory work um, to sign the Nagoya Protocol. Big issues for us was the fact that uh, we've had a lot of um, scientific work that has taken place in the marine environment across the Bahamas over the last 20 years. There was a catch there because in the negotiations so many things were already known that the big pharmaceutical companies and the big developed countries said, well, this only applies going forward. Anything that was known before doesn't count. So ideally, the Nagoya ABS protocol will prevent such cases from happening again with any other useful genetic resources that are specific to our country. These cases demonstrate the importance for Caribbean countries to protect their resources but also enhance the financial, social and political future of the countries. And so we are going to be signatories, I hope, to this convention so that we can protect not just the biodiversity from being um, overexploited, but a lot of it is underexploited. That's where the sustainable development movement is in St. Lucia at the moment, because without laws, you cannot hold people accountable.